morning, Bucknoters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, August 30th, 2019, a.k.a. the day before the season. I am Dave Biddle, joined by Jonah Booker for his usual Friday visit. I mean, it's just, you can feel the buzz here in Columbus, Jonah. You can probably feel it all the way there in the Valley of the Sun in Arizona. Florida Atlantic coming here tomorrow, high noon. It's just going to be a lot of fun. There's just so many things that, uh, you know, it's going to be fun to watch. Justin Fields' debut and, and all that. Just kind of, what are some things that are, that are kind of at the forefront of your mind when you think about this game tomorrow? Yeah, that's the main thing right there is Justin Fields. I mean, the comments from Ryan Day in his press conference really uh, made the hair on my arm stand up. I'm pretty fired up about uh, his development and what they're saying. And pretty much Ryan Day in his press conference said um, over the last week or two, he's really, really upped his game, especially when it comes to his decision-making. Uh, before, he was really risky with the football, and he was very turnover-prone, and He's really cut that down in the latter part and kind of uh, has taken command of the offense. And, and, and Kevin Wilson coming out after he's coached uh, several Heisman quarterbacks saying that this is the most talented quarterback he's ever coached. So when you get the hype from the coaches, that really gets me fired up. So I'm pumped up to see what they can do. Um, a lot of eyes will be on Ohio State. They want to see what Justin Fields can do. Can he live up to the five-star hype? Because if he comes out and has an outstanding performance, it's really going to set the tone for the rest of the rest of the football season. Yeah, it's just – it's, uh, and I, I do feel like, you know, while Florida Atlantic, you know, one of the weaker teams on Ohio State's schedule, of course – they they do have talent. I mean, they have you know the running back Emmons who was uh, you know played at, at uh, Alabama as a true freshman a few years ago. Is now a fourth year junior after being at JUCO for a couple years, including one year when he didn't play. And they've got a lot of other talent. I mean, they've got some decent talent on that roster. So I expect at least Ohio State's defense to be tested. I don't know how much Ohio State's offense is going to be tested, but we'll see. They do have athletes on the defensive side of the ball for FAU as well. But uh, do you expect just with Lane Kiffin and some of the innovative things he might do and some of the athletes they have, you think this? Florida Atlantic team can give Ohio State's defense a legitimate test? Anytime you're in the first game of the season, um, teams are going to have all summer to prepare. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if Florida Atlantic and Lane Kiffin come out with some very creative and innovative looks that Ohio State hasn't seen in tapes from the previous season. That is the norm when it comes to week one. I expect Lane Kiffin to, uh, to really try to challenge this Ohio State secondary. Um, but with that being said, I am looking extremely forward to this secondary. I believe you're going to see a revamped secondary. I think there are going to be a lot of hands getting on the football and creating turnovers. So I, I want Lane Kiffin to push these guys. Let's see what you got, Lane. And I want to see how this secondary responds because I, I really like the pep in the step uh, from what I've read and, and seen from uh, the defensive backs all summer. And I think those guys, they have a newfound um, sense of having fun when it comes to the defense. That was a problem with last year and the year before. They weren't getting the opportunities to put their hands on the football, and I think you're going to see that out of this group come Saturday. So we met with Ryan Day yesterday after he did his uh, his Thursday radio show, and uh, you know he uh, once again reiterated they're going to put the death chart out every Friday. It's usually been put out, like, you know, it used to be put out Monday, then they moved it to Tuesday. Maybe sometimes it was Wednesday if they were running really late or there were some things going on. But this year it's going to be every week on Friday. So later today we'll find out the official death chart. There's going to be no surprises on there. But it will be interesting to see what they say about Jonathan Cooper because, you know, as much as they don't want to talk about injuries over there, uh, as we like to say, talking about injuries at the WAC this year to the media is like talking about Fight Club. They do not do that. They do not talk about injuries. But, you know, I think you know everybody knows by now that Jonathan Cooper has been battling an injury and probably won't play tomorrow. At least that's just, you know, my opinion from what I'm hearing. Um, so that will be one thing I'll be looking out for. Later today, when the depth chart comes out, do, you, do they say that you know Jonathan Cooper's out? Um, how much do they, you know, and maybe some other guys. C.J. Saunders is another one. There's been some rumors that he might be a little banged up. So that's that's one thing I'll be looking for later today, Jay Book. Yeah, and I, the one thing I, I'm curious about is will they have the or? Uh, you know, in years past where they would have they would list a starter and then they would have or this person. So they would essentially instead of let, uh, listing your. Uh, 11 starters on offense or 11 starters on defense, you can have a scenario on the depth chart in years past where it'd be 
listed as 15 starters because they have the or. I, I'm curious to see if they're just going to uh, let it rip and have the 11 and 11 and the two deep behind them. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see about that. I think Cooper's going to be out for several weeks. A lot of glowing reviews with those young defensive linemen. Uh, I'm anxious to see how they perform. Um, the stage the stage can't be any bigger for those guys because a lot of them are getting thrusted in there with no game experience. So they're going to get their feet wet and get thrown into the fire fairly quick here. On the other line, we know they're going to rotate. It's going to be you know it's going to be interesting to see just how quickly some of those guys rotate in. You know, like uh, Nicholas Petit Ferrer and um, you know Joshua. Alabi, Alibi, I think he's a fifth-year senior. I'm still not sure how to say his name. Alibi is what I go with. Um, Urban always called him Alibi. I mean, we know it's not that. Uh, but Josh Alibi is going to be in there as a fifth-year senior. And, you know, we should probably be able to, uh, able to pronounce his name by now. Harry Miller is going to play as a true freshman. Uh, right tackle is going to be the one I'm really like going to be looking for because that was a big position battle coming into Camp J. Book. Brandon Bowen won that job, the fifth-year senior. Richard freshman, NPF. He was the number one offensive tackle recruit in the country in 2018. What is just your take on that? Do you just is it just Brandon Bowen is just a man and he just is a you know a beast and he just won that job? Are you a little down on NPF's development? A little bit of both. Just kind of you know what do you feel about it? you know? And just to be clear again, NPF is going to play tomorrow, but uh, they're going to rotate him in. But uh, just uh, what do you think about that dynamic there with Bowen and, and NPF? I think this this is a situation where. Brandon Bowen is just a grown man. Um, he He's battled back from the leg injury and the multiple surgeries. He got married, had a kid in the off season, graduated, and I think this guy came into camp uh, with the mindset that he is going to handle his business as a true veteran. He gives that uh, veteran leadership and just a calming presence uh, to the offensive line, and I think um, as the dust settled, um, basically they said Brandon Bowen was really holding his own against the uh, Ohio State defense alignment in one on one, and that's what you want to see. And I don't think this has any uh, doing as far as NPS development. They're very excited about him, think that he's going to be a heck of a football player, and he will play uh, a lot this year. And I think it's critical that he plays a lot this year so that you can further advance his uh, development. And I, I feel really good about the offensive line, especially with Bowen and Jackson in there. You're getting two war daddies who's been in the in the fight before, and they're two common presence in the, on the offensive line to help some of the, the – with Wyatt Davis and – and Myers in there. So I really like what the offensive line is looking like as far as depth. One more guy that I'll be looking for later today as far as injuries that I omitted earlier is Austin Mack, another guy that's been banged up that they've been hush-hush about that we're hearing uh, you know, probably won't play tomorrow. But we'll see. Maybe, uh, you know, and one thing they're also going to do is, you know, let everybody know on Friday who is available who is not. They're not going to say why they're not available, uh, you know, what type of injury it is, or if they're suspended. You know, somebody asked that question. So, But they are going to give it, uh, in addition to the depth chart, they're going to give a, a kind of who's in, who's out uh, chart as well. So Austin Mack, that's another one to keep in mind. I want to ask you this. Um, just, you know, because I think, that, I think regardless of what's going on with Austin Mack, what we're hearing is he will be back at some point even if he misses this game. Uh, but Garrett Wilson, we know he's going to play, Jay Book. We know Garrett Wilson's going to play a lot. We know he's talented. Um, but he's still a true freshman, and K.J. Hill's going to get his. Ben Victor's going to get his. Uh, Chris Olave's going to get his. You know, when Austin Mack gets back, he's going to get his. Um, what are your reasonable expectations for Garrett Wilson as a true freshman? Uh, I, I think Garrett Wilson, will. he's going to have the opportunity to really make those wild plays. Um, I know Brian Hartline, I remember specifically during the uh, the Clemson and the Alabama National Championship when Clemson's freshman, true freshman wide receiver absolutely shredded Alabama. Hartline came out and said he doesn't care how young you are. Talent should always be on the field. Um, talent trumps. Uh, seniority in, in this situation. I think Garrett Wilson is a true major mega talent, a guy who has the opportunity to make him make a name for himself on the national college football landscape. And I think if given the opportunity, he's going to ball out. And obviously he's pushed those guys. And a lot of the, the veterans have mentioned his name throughout camp as someone, as a younger guy who's really uh, – 
up their game. So I think Garrett Wilson will have a, a great opportunity to really um, make some plays here. And with that rotation, he will be heavily involved. And I truly believe uh, Ryan Hartline will give him every opportunity to flourish in this offense. It's strange to me covering um, the game tomorrow in one respect. that It's Ryan Day's first you know, real game as, as the head coach. I mean, we know he had the three games as interim head coach, but usually that's a huge thing when a, a new coach has taken over and it's his first game. It's almost like everybody's like, eh. You know, and I understand why because, you know, he did have the three games as interim head coach. He's, he's been here for two years, um, you know, and uh, just everything that's been going on. But but still, it is kind of weird to me that this there's not like a huge buzz about, oh, wow, this is Ryan Day's first game. Yeah, it's, it's not a huge buzz. Um, you know, right now I think Ohio State, a lot of people expect them to be good because of the talent that's going to be there. Everyone knows that uh, for the last several years, the program has recruited at an elite level. So the talent, you know, is going to be greatly um, in Ohio State favor going into this game. So most people expect Ohio State to really roll. I mean, they're uh, a three-touchdown favor here. Uh, but with that being said, the one thing that I am curious to see is Ryan Day has openly said he's still going to call plays. Now, that was one thing that Urban – uh, wasn't heavily in, he was involved with the play calling, but he wasn't the guy that was actually calling the plays. Came from you know Day in the booth for Tom Herman. With Day being on the sidelines, I'm curious to see how that's going to play out because a lot of coaches they like to delegate that authority uh, to their assistant coaches while they kind of manage the whole game aspect. Can he manage the entire football game as well as uh, making sure that the special teams and 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 the the defense is doing what they need to do while also focusing on uh, the series of plays? Can he get into a rhythm as a play caller while also trying to manage the entire game as a head coach? That's going to be fascinating to see. It's going to be so much fun watching Buckeye football tomorrow. I can't wait. Uh, he is Jonah Booker. Real quick, our – Amazing buy one month, get two months free deal. Expires later today, expires midnight tonight. And if you sign up today, that gets you through the entire regular season, including the game up north all the way on November 30th. So this is the perfect day to sign up, last day of the deal, and it gets you through the entire regular season. Uh, so buy one month, get two months free. So three months of buck nuts for the price of one. Make sure you take advantage of this offer before it expires tonight at midnight. Thanks again to the man, Jonah Booker. Really appreciate it, Jay Book, and thanks, everybody, for tuning in to the show. I appreciate that as well. Hope everyone has a great day and a great weekend. Enjoy the game, everybody. Let's hear the Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land.